America's Evil Genius back with you once again, and happy Memorial Day to everybody. We are taping this show on Monday, Memorial Day, and uh, so we want to, of, of course, off the top, wish uh, a happy Memorial Day to all of those uh, servicemen and women and, and their families that are out there, and, and give you a heartfelt thank you for all that you do to ensure our freedom and, and our liberties and and uh, the tremendous sacrifice that you and your families make, and certainly those uh, that, that have uh, passed on in the line of that duty. It, it's a sacrifice that uh, that we should not take lightly. And, and I know here in, in this country, in America, we have a, a tendency sometimes to uh, forget the real meaning of some of our holidays. You know, we, uh, we get so wrapped up in the celebration that, that we often forget why we're celebrating. I mean, we, we certainly do that with Christmas, and we certainly do that with Thanksgiving Day. And, you know, sometimes, though, a lot of time we do that with Memorial Day, too. We get so wrapped up in the the barbecuing and the beer and hey don't get me wrong I have no problem with barbecue and I have no problem with beer but uh, I think we need to stop sometimes and remember why we're we're doing that and why we're celebrating so uh, I think it's worthwhile to do that thank you to all of our servicemen and women out there uh, who have in the past and currently are and those of you in the future who will be uh, defending our freedoms and and uh, keeping our country safe uh, Always worthwhile to do that, and on such a uh, celebratory day, and positive day, and, and reflective day, and appreciative day, I have to say that it comes across a little bit like a punch to the gut, something that I heard on MSNBC over the weekend. Now, I know by this point, you know, I, I should not be shocked at anything that is that comes across MSNBC, that anything their hosts say. I, I should be numb to it by now. I shouldn't be surprised by anything that these uh, radicals uh, that comes out of their mouths. But uh, they did something this weekend that shocked even me. Even even grizzled old me got shocked at this one. This guy named Chris Hayes. I guess he's a like a second level host on there. So he's got some kind of weekend show. I'd never really heard of him before this, but uh, I guess he's got a little show on there. And I'm not going to sugarcoat this clip. I'm not going to set it up for you. Let's just hear what this idiot has to say about heroism and our soldiers. Hit it. I think it's interesting because it is, I think, very difficult to talk about the war dead and the fallen without invoking valor, without invoking the words heroes. Um, and I, I, why do I feel so comfortable about the word hero? I, I feel comfortable, uncomfortable about the word hero because it seems to me that it is so rhetorically proximate to justifications for more war. <laughs> um, and I don't want to obviously desecrate or disrespect the memory of anyone that's that's fallen. And obviously there are individual circumstances in which there is genuine and tremendous heroism of, you know, hail of gunfire and rescuing fellow soldiers and things like that. But it seems to me that we, we marshal this word in a way that um, is problematic. But maybe I'm wrong about that. You couldn't be more wrong. Now, guys, I know. I, I ordinarily, I do some humor on this show. I like to have a little fun with this show. I like to do little jokes and little funny bits from time to time. You know, usually I think that humor is a great way of, of making a point, a great way of getting your point across. But, you know, in, in, in this case, there's really nothing humorous that we can do with this. Uh, there, there's no joke that's appropriate here. There's no humor or funny bit that we can do to put this idiot into perspective. Uh, now, now, guys... If I said to you exactly what was on my mind right now, if I, if I said exactly what I'm thinking right now upon hearing that clip, uh, you would get a string of four-letter words and epithets out of me that would make Sam Kinison proud. So uh, I'm going to ask that you bear with me a little bit as I try to retain whatever level of composure that I can after hearing that extremely offensive statement by Chris Hayes. And... Uh, offensive as a word doesn't even do it justice, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, so where do we start with this guy? Um, I think the best way to start in order to analyze and, and talk about that diatribe of his is to start with, with this one statement that he put out there. And I'm going to quote directly from him. Quoting from Hayes, I, I feel uncomfortable about the word hero because it seems to me that it is so rhetorically proximate to justifications for more war. First of all, Chris, nice use of a thesaurus. Glad to see you can read one of those. But what he's going the very long way around saying there is that he's uncomfortable about using the word hero because he's scared that if you, if you put it in such positive terms that war will be justified and it would encourage people to undertake 
warlike behaviors. Now he does, of course, go on to acknowledge, as you heard, uh, the heroism and valor of, of individual situations, like you know, saving a fellow soldier, or you know, coming down in a gunfire, that kind of thing. Understandable, I get that. But what Hayes seems to overlook, or what he does not recognize, is the intrinsic heroism and intrinsic valor in anybody who would voluntarily offer themselves up to defend the liberties and safety of the rest of us and would be willing to fight our battles whenever we say to do so. What a sacrifice that is! That, if, I can't think of a better definition of the term hero. They've got our backs no matter what we say, no matter what we do. And they're willing to go out there and fight for us. And that's not heroic. That's not something that we should put in a positive frame of reference. Chris, you're nuts. It, it's almost as though, above all else, Chris Hayes is fearful that even the possibility that war might be justifiable or encouraged or even necessary, that he's fearful that that possibility can even be acknowledged. And he's afraid that words like hero might assist in that justification or that encouragement. Now, I haven't really seen much of Chris Hayes before, really didn't know about him before this whole deal, so I don't know specifically what his overall viewpoint on the idea of war is. I will say from hearing this statement that my first inclination is to think that maybe he's one of these peaceniks above all else that thinks that we can live in some kind of a, a world that does not have any war. Now, I don't know that for sure. Maybe I'm overstating it, but that's that's the impression I get at least from that statement. And if that's the case, he could not be more, more misguided. Now, I have no doubt that Chris Hayes and I have quite different viewpoints on our wars in Iraq and our, our wars in Afghanistan. Personally, after 9-11, I can't see how America could be legitimately criticized for anything we do in that part of the world. But be that as it may, he and I probably disagree on that. Let's set that disagreement to the side for right now. The issue is that there are times in this world where war is justified and where war is necessary. We cannot escape war. It's part of the human condition. The idea of a permanently peaceful Earth, while I'm sure it's extremely attractive, has been proven to be absolutely unattainable. And if we in America lose sight of that, then we will be sitting ducks for all of our potential enemies. Now, some are saying, I'm sure that Chris Hayes has freedom of speech. He can say whatever he wants. Well, that's true. He can come out and make whatever lame brain statement he wants to make. And he certainly did over the weekend. And I'm not going to argue that he has the freedom to say whatever he wants. And I'm not going to say that he should be taken off the air by the government or by any other entity for this. I'm, I'm not even saying that MSNBC ought to take him off the air. Although certainly, you know, if they get enough backlash and it hits him in the pocketbook, he might be gone. But uh, remember that free speech goes both ways. Sure, Chris Hayes can pontificate all he wants to, but so can we. We have free speech, too. And you'd better believe after that offensive statement that the rest of America, we, are going to use our free speech to shout down, to obscure, to intimidate, to criticize, and to otherwise bury Hayes' viewpoints on this matter. Let's be clear. Opinions like those expressed by Chris Hayes have no place in the public debate. Not that such opinions should be restricted by a government or restricted by a network or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all. He has the freedom to say whatever he wants. But what I'm saying to you is that we, the American public, can restrict those views. Oh, you can say them, but you've got to deal with the backlash you get from saying it. We can make it clear that such ideas are not welcome in the American arena of ideas. We must make an example of Hayes. We must blow up the internet, blow up the Twitter sphere, shout down anybody who would dare make such a statement in the future. We must take hold of the narrative of this and shove it down Chris Hayes' throat. You see, in 2012, regular Americans have access to things that we never had access to before. You know, we, we, we can fight back against the media when they make ridiculous statements now. In the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, you couldn't do that because they had that monopoly. But now, 
We have the internet. We have talk radio. We have some degree of cable news. So we can fight back. And so we can use those mechanisms to make Chris Hayes an example. And I'm sure that tomorrow, once we get back to the regular grind and your regular talk radio hosts are back on and, and the regular news cycle starts back up again, I'm sure that this will be brought about. It will be controversial. That uh, those in the, uh, if you want to call it the conservative media, will continue to highlight this and continue to put pressure on Chris Hayes as we should. And I'm sure that in a couple of days, as a result of the backlash, Hayes will probably issue some sort of half-assed apology or some sort of clarification, probably at the behest of a panicked MSNBC. I mean, say what you will about them. Uh, they are slaves to the bottom line, as all the rest of us are. And remember, they did fire Keith Olbermann once he started to affect the bottom line a little bit. So they're going to put him under pressure, I would suspect. But don't let it fool you. Let the record show that no matter what Hayes says to try and walk this back, let the record show that Chris Hayes publicly doubted the heroism and valor of our soldiers. There's no way around that. There's no qualifying it. There's no talking your way out of it. And frankly, I don't think I've ever heard such an offensive statement on television. You know, when you really think about it, Chris Hayes in this instance is really no different than Fred Phelps. You know who Fred Phelps is? He's that idiot that goes around all the all the military funerals and protests, gays and so forth, and, and tries to make a connection between military get deaths and the acceptance of gay behavior in America. It's, it's disgusting to see him do that. Because, and then the reason it's disgusting is because Phelps is trying to assign blame for something to those brave military folks who did not make those decisions but just simply fought to defend our country. They simply held up their end of the bargain with the American people. You know, if Fred Phelps wants to criticize the acceptance of the gay culture, then go ahead and criticize and go ahead and protest, you know, the, the public officials who put those things into place or, or the politicians and so forth. That's fine. I, I would agree with you if you did that. But don't criticize those innocent people who all they ever did was defend our nation, defended your sorry butt. Well, Chris Hayes, I can say the same thing about you. You are minimizing the contributions and the heroisms of our brave soldiers, our brave men and women, simply to push a political point that they had no say and they had uh, no input in executing. Some of them agreed with it, I'm sure. Some of them didn't. But they all fought valiantly for it. Now, if you've got a problem with these wars, go take it up with the politicians involved. And I'm sure you probably have at some point. But don't you dare... Don't you dare impugn the bravery of our men and women who defend this country and defend your right to make your sorry statements. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.